Hello my lovelies and welcome to the first day of Allotment of the Dead. Uh, this is a new channel uh, starting today. Um, I've been doing my plot for around six years now and I've, over the years I've done things right, done things wrong, probably more wrong than right, but I finally came to the conclusion that maybe if I share these with you, then you might get a bit out of that and you might not make the same mistakes I have. Um, you might learn a little bit, but why a lot from the dead? Hopefully you'll find that out during the course of these videos. Um, it's not because everything on the plot's dead, but there is probably some things that could kill you. So with this first video, I think what we'll do is we'll give you a tour of the plot in general. Um, I'll show you kind of all the things that I've put in place over six years and uh, we'll go from there. Welcome. So welcome to the allotment of the dead and hopefully you'll find out quite soon why I've called it allotment of the dead. It helps if I could actually say it wouldn't it. Um, so I've come down today uh, the first thing really was to see whether everything survived the uh, 50 mile an hour winds we had last night and after having a brief look over the entire plot i think we pretty much have so that's some good news and uh, you see behind me some really quite tall lilies i was really surprised that they survived at all with that wind the way it was last night and uh, we had things blown around all over the place so i'm quite chuffed that they've actually survived and you'll notice there's a couple of different types there and uh, tiger lilies orange spots they should really be probably called leopard lilies or something like that really but tiger lilies they are and uh, some nice pink lilies there as well okay i'll switch you around we'll have a look through the rest of the plot hopefully you won't get to i'm not very good with the uh, videos yet um hopefully i should be quite steady as time goes on but we'll see how that goes um so tomatillos in pots i've grown tomatillos now for the last couple of years and they've done really well for me, so uh, I'll continue doing them. I think some of you guys will probably buy these things in the shops as uh, salis. Um, they have a nice little uh, covering around a nice sweet fruit in the middle of it. And three different kinds of uh, tomatillo here. I'm all for variety. I'm all for trying different things and trying new different varieties of everything, really. Um, you'll notice on the front of the plot, I've got about six grapevines. Um, the wife sorts those out for me. I'm no good with grapevines at all. It's one of those things that uh, were here on the plot when I first got it. And I think the first year we had about 10 bottles of wine off it. But um, I kind of lost interest in them. And uh, the wife has continued to maintain them for me. Maybe this year we'll get a few more bottles. Um, I've got to say, the, last, the first bottles were just about drinkable something i probably need more work at but potentially it could kill you <laughs> um, so we'll go past these uh, lovely buddleia so this is uh, the front of my plot so we'll go through the buddleia and you'll notice the building here to my left so i built this uh, last year right at the start of the season uh, made of wood and polytunnel cover and uh, Probably cost me more than if you were to just buy a greenhouse, but um, I think it was one of those things that when you first start doing it, you quite enjoy the challenge of actually building it. So uh, it's actually done quite well. Working windows and everything. So we'll, we'll open the windows while we're here. I closed them yesterday because of the winds that potentially we're going to have. And uh, you'll see the undergrowth in there. But I'll, sh I'll show you inside the all of these buildings uh, in native videos so you can see what we've got growing in there. Plenty of flowers around, dotted around all over the place really because uh, flowers are generally what your pollinators need and uh, if you've got pollinators on your plot then everything you're growing will be pretty much pollinated uh, and then you'll get some nice produce. So this is uh, again it's another one of the things I erected uh, an old polytunnel frame and covered with netting. So this is netting. Hopefully the cabbage white butterflies won't get through. That being said, I've had at least one in there already this season. Um, you'll notice uh, I've got some 
still got some little plants there to actually plant. Um, now hopefully go on our new plot, which is uh, a little bit further up in, in on the site. Um, again, different varieties of kale and uh, and cabbages. I like to try different things. So we'll go past uh, my little fence of tay berries and logan berries, and we'll get to the first of my poison gardens. So this is why it's the allotment of the dead. Uh, my daughter made those signs for me. So the uh, that one there was actually the grave marker on my mum's grave. I think she'd be laughing her head off now if she'd actually realised what I'd actually recycled it to. Um, but it suits the purpose. I think everything on that particular area of the plot potentially has got a chance of uh, doing you some damage. So it's probably useful for me to make sure that other people on the plot and the site are actually aware of things that could potentially kill them. Uh, you'll notice they have got some nice large raised beds. Um, carrots in that one haven't done particularly well. I think a lot of people across uh, across the country at the moment are growing carrots with variable degrees of success. Uh, the weather's not been great. We had torrential rain and then really hot weather, and uh, they've been a bit sporadic. Got them covered uh, partly because we've got cats, but also partly because we've got foxes. Uh, we took some really nice footage of uh, a family of four foxes the other night. Um, I'll hopefully post that to a video at some point. Um, so we go past the pink buddleia here. So the only buddleia I'm missing now is a white one. I'm on the lookout for one. They're a little bit rarer than the others. Um, I saw one the other day, but um, I didn't pick it up. So we'll, we'll give that another go. So into my second poison garden. And you'll notice that again, pretty much there's a lot of things here that are poisonous plants. Um, there's a lot of things that probably aren't. So if you look here, there's some nice self-seeded Callaloo, which is part of the Amaranth family. So they, again, they make some really nice um, spears of flowers, which look really, really nice. And you can eat the leaves like spinach. Um, and then these things here, which I think there's probably quite a few will go, ah, sunflowers. Uh, the other name for these is sunchokes. So these aren't actually sunflowers. These are Jerusalem artichokes. Planted them probably about three years ago. I've been trying to dig them out now for the last three years. And as you can see, I'm missing some. I'm, I've always missed some. And once you've got them, it's very, very difficult to get rid of them. So if you're going to grow these, and it's, acquired, it's an acquired taste, they call them farty chokes for a reason. If you're going to grow these, then uh, make sure when you plant them, you actually plant them where you want them. Because once you've got them, you probably will never get rid of them. But again, you will get a nice little sunflower on top of these in terms of the uh, flower. So I might let, let them get to that stage before I pull them out. It's a good way of actually knowing where they are underground as well. Because they, they make little tubers underneath, which is the bit you eat. And uh, again, they're very, very difficult to dig them all out so hopefully if I can figure out exactly where they all are I might have a chance this year and again you'll notice there's some more um, flowers dotted around so these are these are sweet peas again there's about eight or nine different varieties different colors and the smell of them is really really nice and we'll go past my wigwams of runner beans again different sorts of beans and uh, some field beans as well Again, different varieties. And then uh, a nice wigwam. I have another plant there. And I'll talk about that in a later video. And then going back over the back there. So those ones actually are some flowers. And again, survived that wind last night. So I'm quite well chuffed with that. And you'll notice a nice plant here. So we'll talk about that when I talk about the poison gardens and the plants that are in those. And You'll notice there's two buildings here back to back. So I built this first one here, was my first build that I really done um, myself. I bought all of the, the wood and everything and the uh, polycarbonate to actually make it. And my daughter designed this one. So this one is called the Alley House, named after my daughter. 
and again took me about two and a half to three weeks to make and um, quite a long period of time because I uh, made sure that um, everything was as straight as I could. I wanted to make uh, her design actually look like it was supposed to. Uh, but then I noticed when I actually built the roof that the roof was leaking. So you'll notice this year, it's like kind of a two tier affair there where I've actually put a new roof on it. And the building next to it was something I built about midway through last year. Um, used to be a compost heap there, which I managed to dig out completely. The compost heap's probably been there for about 20 years, loads of stuff in it. So uh, I managed to dig that out and that area I managed then to use as a, an extra area where I can plant seeds and little miniature plants and things like that. We'll go around to the front. I called it the new build for now, but um, I'm open to offers as to what potentially I could call that building. It's um, it's called the new build for now. So you can see there with a nice little stable door. Um, I designed this one and um, again, it's done quite well for me. But uh, we'll talk about what's uh, in all of these buildings uh, with, with, new, with different separate videos. And a couple of bushes there, which I need to trim back from the path. The thing about allotments is generally you try and have to keep the um, Paths clear of all debris and things like that. Oh, it looks like a sunflower has it, the dust there, actually. I might have to uh, stand that one up and stake it, give it a chance at survival. Because although this is the allotment of the dead, I don't particularly like things dying on me. We'll go. Um, so these two plants here, Joster berries. So Joster berries are one of the first berries that you'll get each season that actually comes into ripeness. It's I would say it was a cross between a black currant and a gooseberry in terms of taste. Quite tasty, uh, makes really good wine. Uh, again, makes uh, really good smoothies and things like that. And then a bath full of uh, strawberries. And it looks like there's a row dock leaf in there as well, which I'm probably going to have to weed out at some point shortly. So all of my tomatoes. And you'll notice that I probably, on a regular basis, plant things way too close. And I've done the same here, I think. But every year, they've done all right. I've got plenty of tomatoes off them. We've made plenty of uh, air-dried tomatoes. And we've got dehydrators at home that we generally use for those. So again, some more field beans and uh, some courgettes. So the courgettes are all dotted around. Well, they reckon you need about two plants for a family of four, and I've probably got about ten here. So uh, I plan on feeding the masses. It's good for uh, actually making sure you've got enough produce for the uh, apocalypse when it comes, um, being the allotment of the dead. So we'll go through next to these couple of uh, polytunnels, and you might see this, hopefully. I'm in due for a new cover so one of the things i'll be doing later on in the season is replacing these covers with some proper covers some uh, proper polytunnel cover um, so i'll have to make a frame around the metal um, polytunnel um, so, which you can attach then the covers to and that will again will enable you to uh, hopefully have something that's going to last a bit longer so these green ones, they last about three years. Anything longer than that is a bonus. So a couple of polytunnels. So again, I'll have a chat uh, to talk to you about what's in these in some other videos. And some more flowers. There's my little pond there or a bucket of water in it. Serves the same purpose. It gives an opportunity for the bees and the insects to get a drink um, and again that's what these two trays here on the top trays of uh, stones with water around them so that the bees can land safely and actually get a drink and then everywhere you've got a bath you've got an opportunity to plant something in it so all your root vegetables like your carrots your parsnips your radishes all those do really well in these baths they're raised up a little bit so they don't get things like the carrot fly and stuff suffering quite so much but you'll notice here We've got a bit of flea beetle, so uh, leaves have gone a bit 
horrible on them a few holes in them and again on the uh, the chinese cabbage they're still edible they still taste really really good it's just uh, they don't look particularly good and there's my runner beans on traditional canes um, if you can see through those i've got the uh, first lot of sweet corn there so sweet corn is it's actually popcorn it's not actually sweet corn um my wife grows the normal stuff i grow the stuff that's a little bit more weird uh, again we'll have a chat about that and again it's probably one of the reasons why i've named this allotment of the dead because of the stuff the strange stuff the weird stuff that i grow um in here uh, there's about 65 maybe more varieties of chili um i always go way overboard on the chilies but the taste of some of them are fantastic and the heat on some of them is absolutely phenomenal phenomenal that's quite a word um again we'll go through what sort of plants and things are in here later on in another video you can see there are a nice big bucket of weeds i've done a little bit of weeding in here um we'll go through pests and weeds as well actually that might be a good thing for you guys um some ways of how i get rid of them and ways of maybe you hopefully being able to tell me how to get rid of some of these but, uh, we'll see what happens okay we'll go along past this lovely tree just uh been there a few years now so i'm getting some nice fruit off the tree now let me know what uh, tree this is um i do know what it is but uh, see if you know um and then into my final part of my plot where i've got lots of metal cages um growing that i can grow up with my pumpkins and squashes so if you can see in the ground here dotted around there's uh, cosmos and uh, pumpkins and squashes and then uh, towards october november hopefully there'll be all of these plants will be growing up these canes and across the uh, the meshing on the top and then hanging down so i have look what looks like little lanterns hanging down off the uh, top of this cage which will then um, give me some nice big pumpkins hopefully but again horrible weather um, I'm glad to some extent there wasn't anything growing up these um, last night because I think they probably wouldn't have survived. I'd have ended up with a lot of pumpkins on the floor. Uh, and you see again there, some more popcorn there growing. And then what's left over of my aubergines. Okay, so that is the, 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 the rundown really of what the allotment of the dead is. And um, that's the amount of space I've got. So it's nearly 300 square meters of land to play with and uh, I've got to say I do play I don't do a lot of serious garden I would say it's generally more try different things try new things um, and we eat a lot of weird and wonderful stuff off my plot my wife grows more of the normal stuff and so we get a lot of the uh, lettuces cabbages those sort of things from her plot and then uh, she lets me play on this one so uh that's me uh thank you for joining in let me there you go so thanks very much for uh, coming and have a look at my plot um hopefully we'll get some really good videos uh coming out a bit further over the next few weeks i will uh talk about some of the bits and pieces that i'm growing some of the things that um maybe i shouldn't be growing no it's not things like marijuana can't get that yet um and things like that so uh thank you very much guys um so all you allotment zombies out there we'll see you on the next video